Hey, Sunday night, Soul Timers. How you doing? Hope you had a good week and a good weekend. We are continuing with the theme that I really want us to take into this year, which is stepping out of survival mode and into thriving mode. You know, I've been reflecting a lot and I see a lot of this within the women's purpose community. And um, look, for many of us, I think COVID was the awakening that our lives at the pace that we were living them were simply not working. Um, I had actually felt this uh, a few years prior when COVID came into play. But um, what we were shown is like this pace, this, this, you know, collective human experience we've been choosing just really ultimately isn't serving us. Um, we're trying to do too much. We're constantly going. We're trying to constantly achieve. We're constantly trying to produce. And we're not actually showing up and being present for the journey, which we're actually here to do, which is what I'll call soul expansion which requires time to go within, which requires being really present and alive for life. So if we're always in that catch-up mode, if we're always reacting to life, we are going to be living and embodying in a state of consciousness, which is anchored to just survival. So this isn't like, I don't have food and water. This is like my body and my nervous system feels like I am constantly just, you know, life is something just that's happening to me and I'm just trying to survive it. So it's like you you can never get on top. You're never fully present. You're never like fully aware and centered and grounded for what is. It is just this constant race, if you will. And I really don't think that's how we're meant to live. Um, but look, the paradigm, uh, especially in the corporate world, it's structured as, as such that it, it's quite challenging to create different for yourself within it. But I believe we can. And, um, and it starts with you. It starts with you. And as we all start to make these subtle little changes, we can help shift the greater whole. And so I hope that you'll really take that to heart. There are changes in things that you can make in your life, right? So going back on the topic, you know, stepping out and we're, we're continuing this conversation. If you haven't watched the last two Sunday nights, full times, I definitely suggest to go back and watch those. Because we started with just you looking at your foundation, right? And what are the little things you can do every day from a behavior standpoint? So self-care, taking time, you know, for indulgence for yourself and other things that are small, simple things, times for inner reflection that you can hold as sacred um, to set yourself up to be in a position to thrive. Doing these alone will not make that happen. But you need that foundation in place to be able to shift your consciousness, to be able to shift your reality to do it. If you're constantly, you know, action wise, you know, structure of your life, constantly that go, go, go with no, no balance for self-care, for time to go within, um, then it's going to be hard to do a little bit of the layers that we've built onto this, right? So last week, I gave you a practice to just do for the week to really start start to shift your perception from a mindset. I gave you some mantras to say each day about you really getting out of the perception that I have no control over my life and reality. Like I'm stuck in this job. I'm stuck in this schedule, but who created it? You did, <laughs> right? Like you are still making all your choices. But what happens is when we get so busy and so overwhelmed, all of a sudden we feel like a victim to our lives, even though we fully created it. And I, I get it. I lived there for a very, very long time. I felt very much like a victim to my life. Like I was trapped in it. There was no way out of this um, reality in this life I'd created and I was experiencing. So the mantras from last week were really just to help you start to shift this. This is the key to everything. Your mindset, right? How you are, you know, your perception moment to moment is a choice. It is a choice. And that in your ability to exercise that choice is directly influencing the reality that you experience, right? Am I, go, am I seeing the lack and limitation everywhere I look? Am I seeing my own lack and limitation everywhere I look? Or am I seeing the abundance for what is? This is very much a half, you know, glass full of half empty type of thing. And it's not just on the big stuff. It's moment to moment, the lens and perception upon which you are choosing to look around the world, look at yourself. And when you start to have a subtle shift in that perception, all of a sudden, new opportunity, new possibility opens up for you. So I hope if you did practice those mantras this week, that you felt a little something. And continue them if you like, okay? 
because tonight what I want to talk about and then next week, we're going to get into really how to set and write intentions that are going to serve you, serve your growth, serve your expansion this year. But before we get into that, I want to make sure, which is why we had the last two weeks doing what we're doing, that we are entering it and writing those intentions from an abundance mindset, not a scarcity mindset, not a lack and limitation mindset. Because the energy with which you bring to any kind of goal or intention you want to work on through the year will have an extremely significant impact on whether those intentions become reality or not, okay? So tonight, it's all about the mindset with which an energy that you're directing toward yourself. And look, human default condition, you are not alone in this. I am a total, you know, victim of this, if you will is to direct negative thinking towards self. That is the ego mind, that voice of fear in your mind that presents itself as the voice of reason. That is human default condition. We all have it. We're all here having an experience with it. Oh, I'm not enough this, so I can never do that. You know, it is so easy, uncomfortable for most of us to direct negative thoughts to ourselves, to beat ourselves up at the end of the day. Why'd you do that? To like that inner critic and inner naysayer, you know, she is going all the time. That is unconsciousness as well. You know, when you are not consciously um, choosing your thoughts, being an awareness of the energy that you're directing at yourself, that will just run. Like, it it just go, beat yourself all all day long, right? You're not alone in that. That is, again, human default conditioning. So if you are in that, and then you're going to write these intentions or have these goals that you want to focus on for the year, they're just going to counterbalance each other out. Right. So again, another really good foundational step that I want you to have is positive energy, consciously directing positive energy towards self. And at the same time, pausing that inner critic and inner naysayer. So again, we we kind of have like three steps here, three kind of layers of foundations that we're setting up before we go into intention writing next month in February is your routine. Are you making time for you to get into a thriving type of lifestyle? You know, are you setting yourself up for that? Do you believe anything possible? Really? That's what we did last week. And now can you direct some positive energy in view towards self? That's massive. Again, you know, because when you write your intentions, any goals, if you are not like believing that you're deserving of receiving them, if you have so much negative energy directed at yourself, those are blocks. Those are energetic blocks. To everything you want coming in, right? So you can have the greatest vision board, the intention for my life, I want to do this. But if you don't believe you deserve it and you're actively communicating to the universe that you are, you know, a piece of SHIT, that, 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 whatever it is, like, how do you expect those to anchor in? So having a conscious practice, and I know it's hard, right? Human default, I'm totally comfortable beating myself up. That's no problem, right? But consciously directing positive energy to myself, it makes us uncomfortable and it shouldn't. We should be so comfortable directing positive energy to ourselves. It should make us highly uncomfortable the amount of negative energy we direct to ourselves. So think about that. Pause on that one. If you find what I'm about to suggest feels uncomfortable to you, that shows you that there is work to do. So what I want to give you, I'm going to give you three things. And the goal is I want to encourage you to adopt some sort of daily, weekly, whatever feels easy, doable, and achievable. Do not set yourself up that like, there's no way to get it done or it's too big that, you know, you fail at it, right? Is to enter into this new year with some kind of practice. And it does not need to be anything big where you consciously direct positive energy to self. That is going, I'm deserving. I am worthy of all the things I want to receive. I am worthy of these dreams in my heart coming true. Because I, I, you know, self-love, okay? Self-love, that's a journey we're all really on, right? That's, That's my journey that will continue for this lifetime and many others. I don't know if I'll ever quite reach it. But, um, but we try and it's a practice. So, Three ways, and again, this week we're talking about directing positive energy to self. And what you can do is you can play with all three of these this week 
see which one feels the most uncomfortable and then that's the one that you should move forward with. So I just want you to pick one. And I want you to pick one that you do weekly, monthly, or daily if you have the time for it, okay? So the first one is just daily words of appreciation for self, right? So it's just pausing and you can say, I appreciate that you did this today for me, Jessica. I appreciate you did this, you know, adjectives, just directing and conscious, look in the mirror and do it. That would be really bold and brave, right? And just saying, you know, the way that you would to a friend or if you're a mom to your kid, direct some of that to you. And it's so simple. You just sit and be quiet for a minute and say some positive stuff to yourself. It was great how you did this today. I'm really proud of you for this. That's it. Positive words of appreciation to self. I mean, one minute of that versus the hours you spend beating yourself up. Think about that. Make it a practice. And again, then watch how all of a sudden, like those things you've been dreaming about wanting start to just show up in your life because you're ready to receive them. You've got it. Your self-love has to match those like dreams that you're wanting to manifest. You know, if you have a, a dream that's up here, but your worth and is down here, like, how can that come in? Okay, that's number one. Number two is what I'll call the pause and redirect. So this can be really powerful too. So when you're noticing that you're in that negative, ah, I'm beating myself up. One, the goal is to notice. That's goal number one. And then when you notice it, to pause it and redirect through an affirmation. The one I have here that I want to invite you to say is when you notice, oh my God, Jessica, you didn't do this. You didn't do that, 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 that. Pause it. Don't do it for three hours. Pause it. You know, when you're an hour in, stop and say to yourself, I have grown. I am growing. I have grown. I am growing. And that's the way to kibosh it, pause it, and redirect back into some positive energy self. You know, you can, you can say something else. You can say, I love you. You can, you can do that as well. It can be anything. But I find that when we're really in a self-sabotaging kind of thing, it's it's in, it's really helpful, a good redirect is right. So it's like, I'm growing. That's what I'm here to do. So of course I make mistakes, whatever, right? There really are no mistakes though, by the way. So, and then number three, the third option I want to give you, and it's a little bit of a bigger one, but if you're like, I am hearing you, I am so sick of beating myself up. I want to go all in on this is get a journal, you know, just get like a journal and dedicate it to a celebration of self journal where once a week, once a month, you actually really write and just like not like celebrate yourself. I am proud of you for doing this. I am proud of, it was amazing how you showed up for this job, you know, write maybe three things a day, whatever you want to do. Okay. So I'm giving you three options. What I invite you to do is play with them, see which one's the most uncomfortable and then adopt that one to move forward with you through this year through this year and as another layer, another foundational step before we talk intentions, which we're going to spend a lot of February on in these Sunday night full times. Do not, I, I well, it depends on what, what you've got going on in your world. I, I encourage you to like play with all three, but don't attempt to try to do all three. Just pick one, keep it simple, keep it simple. Okay. And so let me just recap for you what they are. Number one, daily or weekly, whatever it can be, Words of appreciation to yourself. Get quiet. Close your eyes. Say positive things yourself. You know, the opposite of all the negative stuff you say all day long. Number two, pause and redirect. When you're in the negative thinking directed towards self, pause it. Even if you can do that alone, that's great. You don't even need to do the redirect. Just pause that. But if you're at redirect and just say, I have grown, I am growing. As an answer to, you know, whatever you're beating yourself up over. And then number three, a celebration journal of self. That's it. Um, wishing you a beautiful week ahead. And uh, if you ever need anything, reach out. If you ever have any topics you'd like me to focus on, feel free to send me a note as well. And uh, I just love to know how you're receiving these and I hope they're helping you. Okay, bye for now.